Don, the Oxford Professor. Um, I've got a lot of record things going on this week. I bought 5,000 records just a few days ago. Um, I've been out buying records pretty much, geez, three or four times this week. Uh, one of my pickers called for the third time this week. He bought a couple thousand at a estate sale, and I literally have went and looked at those. Um, so I thought I would go over Pop Psych. Um, for those of you who've never heard of it, Pop Psych is a specific site just for records mostly. And they do have some other items. You'll see CDs and things on there too occasionally. But it's mostly for records. Um, I believe it's a Dutch site. Um, uh, it's something you pay for. You can look at, say, I think 18 or 20 for free each day of the week. So if you just want to get a good idea on how it works, um, you can just go to Pop Psych, P-O-P-S-I-K-E. Um, but I've used Pop Psych for, geez, 8, 10 years now. Um, a lot of items, uh, rare records, do not show up on eBay but once or twice a year. So if you're searching when the one hasn't sold for, for a while, you're not going to find them. And that's a lot of the records that I sell. Um, so I always go to Pop Psych for most oddball records. Um, the one-offs, the ones that you they've pressed a hundred or a couple hundred only. The oddball records that you don't see very often on eBay. That's where I get my prices from. Um, but I'm going to show you Pop Psych in just a minute here. Um, I'll kind of show you around. Pop Psych is, is a good site. Um, if you find out that you're going to be doing a lot of records or it's something that you, you want to get into, um, check it out each day. Use your free ones out there, the free um, searches that you can do um, each day. And try, try and get an idea on how it works and if it's something you'd like to even get into. A lot of people don't want to mess with records. Um, but once you get the grading down and, and um, sourcing down, records are a huge money maker for us. Um, I mean, we sell records, geez, at least once a, once a month, probably for 500 plus. At least one record once a month for 500 plus. Every single month. Some months more than that. Some some months, like last December, we, we did almost uh, $2,500 in, in a record just last month. I've sold records for four grand before. Tommy and the Derbies, um, one of the records I've had several times before. And we've gotten $4,200 for just one of those, just one of the 45s we had. And I've had three of those. So, you know, there's money into records, even on 78s. Um, there's a ton of money. Um, Wolverton Orchestra, I've sold one of those for twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 before. Um, uh, some of the Bix uh, 78 jazz records I've sold high dollar too. Um, it, it just depends on what you're, what, you're, what you're talking about. But records sell very, very well, depending on where you're selling them and your knowledge on the record. So research is key again. We're going to pop over to the screen and you can see how Pop Psych works and see how I research and pretty much anybody who does records that's knowledgeable is going to use Pop Psych. They're going to be one up on you if you're not using Pop Psych, I can tell you right now. But uh, here we go. This is Pop Psych, P-O-P-S-I-K-E dot com. Um, if you haven't heard of it, I would really recommend you going and checking it out. Um, Pop Psych is a site that I use all the time for rare and um, oddball records. Um, there are some other sites too, which I will show you in another video, but this is the main one that most people who do records and are having their records will use. Uh, you're able to look up like a dozen, maybe even a little more than that, uh, items for free. Um, other than that, you'd have to pay, um, but you can look up a dozen or so, as I said, per day. Uh, so if you have a whole bunch of records, it might take you a while if you're just trying to do it for free. Or you could pay, I think it's like $18 is what I pay every six months. Um, it's a Swedish site, I believe, in Sweden. Um, and I've paid it and had this site for, I don't know, um, geez, probably eight, ten years. Uh, it's like $36 a year total. Um, they take PayPal, so I'm not trying to promote it. I don't get a dime from these people. Okay, so we're just going to look a quick look for Soul 45. I just want to show you some of the prices and, and what you can look for in Pop Psych. Um, I'm going to do it by um, highest first. I'm just literally looking for Soul 45. There's going to be other Soul 45s that are not going to show up this way because some people might not have put 45 in the title. Um, they might have put 7-inch or single or anything along that line. Um, but this will give us a pretty good idea. And you can see right off the bat, the very first one is $15,000. These are just common average prices for things in, in some of these records. Now, I've had some of these like United Sound. Mine didn't go for that good since it was not as nice of a copy. Um, I have sold some, and some on this list are mine. Uh, there's some higher ones in here. Tommy and the Derbies, I sold several in the $4,000 range. Those are my highest ever uh, selling records. Um, but you can see some of the prices on here. We're still in the 4000 range, um, and these go up and up and up. I mean, this is just 
Soul 45s. Um, let's type in uh, jazz. And let me show you some of the jazz prices. Um, top one, $11,000. Um, this is for Wolverine Orchestra, and that's got Bix in it. Um, if you're not familiar with Bix Beiderbeck, uh, I would look him up. Um, he's somebody you should know. Um, any uh, jazz history class you take is going to discuss him in it for sure. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of the early Paramount. I'll be showing you some of these too. I've got a ton of Paramount labels. Tiny Parham, I mean, these are just people that I've run across very rarely, but they do show up. Um, some really rare records in here. Um, but Pop Psych will give you all the answers you need to um, records that you can't find. If you can't find it, chances are you're going to find it on Pop Psych if it's worth something. Pop Psych literally has records that are valued all the way down to like $18. Anything below that, usually you won't find on here at all. Um, and mostly it's usually $20 and, and up is what you'll find. Uh, but any record that I can't find on eBay, this is the first place I go. There's other places you can go to. Manships is another one. John Manship, uh, he has a huge site. I do go by his. He's probably one of the, the biggest record collectors on the planet. Um, he's got the rarest record ever uh, found. Um, the, the, the guy has a ton of records. Um, so um, that's what I look for. But uh, Pop Psych, again, anything you can think of is on here. Let's type in Beatles. Let's see what we got for Beatles. Oops, let's see if I spell it correctly. We'll just start over on that. Beatles. A top record is almost $20,000. Um, it's a Beatles White Album. Um, if you're not familiar, the White Album was numbered. Each edition, I've had tons of the numbered ones. The earlier the number, the, the more expensive it is. This is number five, meaning that it's the fifth record that ran off the factory pressing. And that's a huge ordeal. Um, but uh, again, Pop Psych is the bomb. If you're not familiar with Pop Psych, uh, Pop Psych is really where you want to go to find out records. Let's show you a butcher cover real quick here. Um, if you're not familiar, this is on Ben on the News, National News, World News, all the time. Um, this one was actually banned, and they put a sticker over it. And um, this is the first date. This means that this copy was issued, sold to the public, just as you see it. Um, this was actually recalled then, and instead of just throwing away all these records, all they would have had to have done is they stuck a sticker over the front of this, and uh, it, it's literally got a different picture on it. But what people do um, is they'll actually take the sticker off and try and sell it as the first date. So that's just one of those little things you need to know if you're going to be really into records. But um, that is that. Uh, here's another butcher cover, authentic, um, $12,000. Um, these are literally what you'll see some of these records going for. Um, I've never had many in the high dollar Beatles records. Um, they just don't show up that much. Um, you can see the butcher covers. Here's another butcher cover. It's almost, it's around 9000 here. Um, it shows British pricing too, so uh, that's uh, pounds. Um, you can, it actually translates it for English too. So, and you can pick the the country you're in if you're in another country, and it'll give you prices differently for your country. Um, but this is just Beatles. Let's just type in Soul. Let's try that. Um, but again, this is it. If you want to find the prices and you want to know the rare records, this is where you go. This is just the biggest source that I could I could recommend. And again, if you're going to get into records a lot and you you realize just how much money is in records. Um, and how easy it is, well, I shouldn't say easy, but uh, you're going to find a rare record quicker than you're going to find a rare piece of clothing worth a couple thousand dollars. I've run across, you know, uh, records worth thousands, you know, quite often, maybe once a month or so. How often do I run into clothes worth a thousand dollars? Almost never. I've probably got two jackets um, last year. Uh, one was a World War II uh, pi uh, fighter pilot bomber jacket, which we got almost $2,200 for. And then we had um, like a 1930s motorcycle jacket that we got almost 1000 We got 964 um, But that's about it in clothing. And that's last year, the whole entire year, two pieces. Records, I'd, I'd take two hands plus I think we sold like fourteen or 15,000 plus records last year alone. That's just single records that sold for over $1,000. Um, but just look at the prices here. You're, you're tons of pricing, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. Um, and that's just here. Let's type in, uh, let's type in rare. I'm just going to do a couple more. So you, but you can get the picture here. Um, this is a place and a site you'll want to use. Uh, here's a new one. Tommy Johnson, Alcohol and Jake Blues. 
Um, this one I don't remember even looking up before, but uh, $37,000. Now, there's other records in other places you can look that, that sell records or have records worth way more than this. Um, like Velvet Underground had a record that sold for like $50,000. Um, uh, Manship had one that he bought for... I don't know, 20000 or 25000 So some of them don't actually show up on here. But this will give you um, or me, even at my level of, of, of abilities and records, this is where I go. And uh, this gives me the, uh, the, the needed information. Um, and again, this is how I look for local, what local labels I'd see, like this one here. I've seen a copy of this once. Um, and didn't know anything about it at the time. And when I went back to get it, it was gone. So, you know, you got to get them when they're available. But uh, this is Pop Psych. Again, if you have questions on this or anything, uh, it's just a matter of typing in what's on the record. I would always just type in the person's name uh, and then go from there. Like if it's an Elvis one, just type in Elvis. Oops, let's get rid of some of that information on there. Just type in Elvis and then search or whoever's ever names on it. Um, chances are you only want to look up the ones of the people that you've never heard of. Um, most of the famous people you can find on eBay, um, and they're not worth a ton of money. Uh, this is a different story like Elvis. I've had some of these high dollar ones, but uh, not in the misprints. Um, we're still in the 7000 on Elvis, but the Sun Records are what usually sells for Elvis the best, uh, other than like a misspelling or something like that, which I see quite a few misspellings. Um, but that is Pop Psych, and again, I'll show you another site or two uh, in another video, um, but this is just a real quick one here. Again, Pop Psych, P-O-P-S-I-K-E, um, that is the site you want to use. I would I would hit it as a favorite place, save it. Um, I believe um, I have a, uh, a cell phone app for this. I usually don't use it because I usually grab the ones I know or the ones I'm really questioning on, and if I'm wrong on a couple of records, I usually just throw them in a lot, and usually there's something oddball and they'll sell anyway. Um, but that is that. Well, that's Pop Psych. Um, I used it religiously. Uh, every six months, we renew our membership with it. Um, I pay, uh, you know, it's like 30 bucks a year, you know, a couple bucks a month, and it's well worth it um, for what I get out of it. If you find one record that you had no clue on that you can market and sell for a thousand bucks or a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks, you've paid for a whole year's worth of service. So, and that's what you need to do. You need to be able to look those up. And again, as I said, research is key for everything. So if you're not researching it, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your money and the whole works. You're just not going to succeed. Research, research, research. Research everything. Especially when you're first starting out and are not familiar with items. I've pointed to records and several other people here have now commented that they've bought this record or that record. And now they're making money on records too. Um, a lot of things I've talked about, a lot of people don't know anything about and think, you know, that I might be crazy for what, what I get and that you're not going to be able to find the items. But I guarantee you, every single item I've had in any one of my hauls, I thought the exact same thing on. I would have never guessed someone would pay me $4,000 for a 45 record. Never in my wildest dreams. Wasn't into collectibles and antiques and books and records and things. Um, but I knew that uh, I didn't want to work for somebody, and I knew that the clothing side of it was a, was a long, hard hustle compared to what I do on a record. You know, and I like to listen to music. I've always liked music. Uh, I've got a huge um, MP3 collection, um, just everything that I like. So um, records are where, where you can make a ton of money, and it's a good bolo for anybody, anytime, if you know what to look for. I mean, literally, there's a ton of good records that are worth a ton of money that you can even find at Goodwills, Salvation Army, and thrift stores as well, because I've hauled, hauled records from every one of those sources. Church sales, garage sales, flea markets, antique malls, antique stores. I get records that I can make good money on every one of those places I go. So, you know, it's your call whether you, you like to enclose and you want to, you know, branch out. But if you're not doing other things and being able to branch out, you're, you're missing out on stuff. So, But you're just missing out if you're not branching out and, and checking new areas. And you might enjoy it better with less work, less hassle, less returns, and the whole works. But that's about it for today. Uh, Don, the auction professor, please hit the like button down below if you enjoyed it. Tell a friend and subscribe if you haven't.